In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome back to our lesson about Tzoma uh, it's, uh It's getting to near the end of this fast, and uh, if you're anything like me, this is the hardest part. Uh, while we're at the cross um, of like, you know, the finish line, this is when things get tiring, it gets a little bit difficult. Uh, you start rushing through the prayers and your body starts giving up on you but make sure to stay strong for there's a a, a purpose in why we're doing this fast again uh it's it's important to kind of remember how we started with that energy and that umph and we should finish strong as well so if you're struggling remember to stay in there and to remember the spirit of the fast and it's hard maybe you're at school maybe you're away at college maybe at work you're not able to really uh, give it your all, but just try to do something to remember the spirit of the Tzoma Felsata, so at least you can be in that mindset of the of the fast. Um, so uh, for the past few days, we've been talking about the prayer that St. Ephraim uh, prayed as the Virgin Mary appeared to him, and today we're looking at the part where he begins by saying, and then he says, rejoice, fully rejoice, O mankind. Rejoice, he says, uh, for the joy that we find in God, the joy that we find in the Son of the Virgin Mary, the joy that we find in the person of Jesus Christ is the joy that we cannot find anywhere else in the world. It is the joy that has been offered to us that is real and, and authentic and that is eternal. Uh, it's not a bootleg version of, of a joy as the world offers us. Bootleg versions are annoying. There's nothing more annoying than watching a good movie, but that happens to be bootleg. You could see the people walking uh, in front of the screen. The audio is not really clear. These days, things are different, but I remember growing up bootleg versions just not quite like the real thing and this world has nothing but to offer you but bootleg versions of of joy they're not real it's not uh eternal but god offers the real joy and and that's the type of joy saint Ephraim was telling us to, to have he says mankind rejoice why should we rejoice rejoice he goes on and he says because God has loved this world. Because God has loved this world. Now, we know how the narrative is going to end. We know that once God the Father sends his son, his son is, is, is beat, he's, he's crucified, and he dies on the cross. Think about that image. Whenever we talk about the crucifixion, like we speak about it all the time, Christ has died for me, Christ has died for me, Christ has died for me. But imagine being there at Calvary in the presence of Jesus Christ as he's on the cross and shaking with pain after he's been beat so many times. Imagine his face, imagine his agony, feel his pain. Think about all these things that our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ is doing for you and me. He has done this to give us a new life, a new beginning. What kind of love is this? We have been given this gift so that we have eternal life with him. We have been given this gift so we have the real type of joy with him. So now the question is, how do we respond how do we respond to this love? If your parents gave you a new phone, you would hug them. Or if they gave you a new car, you would hug them, right? You would love them. The appropriate response for someone giving you an awesome gift is appreciation. Uh, if someone was to uh, hit you, you would hit them back. Hopefully not because we're Christians. But the response to someone doing something bad is well, either you walk away uh, or, you know, you might do something. But the response to someone doing something good for you is appreciation. So the question is, how do we appreciate God who has given us the ultimate gift of, of life? The only thing we could do is worship him. 
That is why our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ is the center of worship. He not he didn't just love this world. He went on to give us a gift. He gave us his only begotten son. He loved this world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That is a gift like no other. And this is a reoccurring theme in, in Widasi Marem. This is a gift that we have received from God. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, is a gift that we have received. He is a gift that we have received. And the only thing that we can do is appreciate him through worship. This is why worship is important. This is why we have to take the time to always thank God for giving us a new beginning. That whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Think about this. Like, whoever believes in him, whoever accepts the gift of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, the gift is given to us. But whoever accepts him through faith will have eternal happiness, eternal kingdom, eternal life. Think about what the word eternal means. Like, a lot of the times we talk about this concept of saying forever. Like, if your friend makes you wait 30 minutes for dinner, you say, oh, I was waiting forever. Or like, if you are on a phone conference call for like, you know, an hour or so, you say, I was on the call forever. But think about what the word forever means. Let's do uh, an exercise. If I give you the assignment of reading one letter of the of the Bible, uh, just one letter a day. Think about how long that process will take you. That means you open up into the book of Genesis and you say, uh, I, and then you close it. And then the next day you open up and you read a second letter of, of the Bible. N, and then TH, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, so every day, you're only allowed to read one letter of, of uh, the word within the Bible a day. Think about how long it would take you to get through the entire Bible. To give you an idea, to give you an idea, there is 45 letters just within the first verse of the first book of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That alone would take you 45 days. Uh, depending on which version of the Bible you have, there's over 800,000 words within the Bible. So think about that task and how long that task will take you. Now, what if I asked you to read one letter of, 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 of the word within the Bible a day for all the Bibles that have existed throughout the world in all the languages? Now, think about how long that task will take you. Uh, to give you an idea, the Bible has been translated in over 1,000 languages. So think about every single day, all you will have is one letter to read. How long will that task take you to accomplish? Uh, there's been um, nearly uh, 100 million copies sold of the Bible just this year, just this year. Uh, over the course of time, there's been billions and billions of Bibles that, that's been uh, printed. So think about how long this task will take you. Now, when we are comparing it to eternal, the task of reading one letter a day from all the Bibles that have ever been printed is shorter than a fraction of a second. When compared to eternal, when compared to eternity, this task is shorter than a blink of an eye. Eternal means eternal, forever being with God, forever being happy. Not the bootleg version, but the real honest type of happiness and joy that God has, has given us. This is the opportunity we have by accepting the gift of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then St. Ephraim goes on to say, And then he gave us his arm. 
He gave us his arm as a gift. So the reason why he calls Christ his arm is because a man's strength is, is, is measured through his arm. The stronger the person is, the bigger things he's able to lift with his arms. And just like that, we got to know how strong the father is through the miracles that his son, Jesus Christ, was performing. This is why St. Ephraim is calling Jesus uh, the arm of the father. The other reason why he calls him the arm is because the arm never separates from the body. Just like that, when the son came into this world and became, and became man, he was never divided from the father and the Holy Spirit. He remained in authority with the father and the Holy Spirit in the kingdom of heaven. He never lost his grace. He never lost his glory because he came into this world. Beseech for us, our mother, the Virgin Mary. So this is the prayer uh, that um, St. Abraham prayed for this stanza. I hope you guys are learning. Uh, stay strong in this fast. Uh, make sure that you keep on praying. And, and if you can, try to go to church. Uh, and pass this video along to your friends so, uh, so you know uh, everybody could hear the word of God. And, and, and may God be with us all. Uh, until next time, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.